So you wanna be a content creator. Well, that means you need charisma. You gotta learn filmmaking, technical skills, editing. There's so much time and effort that goes into creating content. But what if I told you there was a solution? What if I told you that by harnessing the power of AI, procedurally generated dialogue, environments, Unreal Engine, code, scripting, you could have all that power of a content creator at your fingertips. Well, I'm happy to announce that I, Sam Gorski, finally figured it out. I cracked the code with my content button. If I press this, I will be creating content instantly. Anything could happen when I press this button. What is content? Is content even good? Is content just like the vegetable oil of art? It's something that is like classifies as a food product and has calories, but it is so devoid of any flavor or value. There's garbage out there everywhere. These influencers creating relationships, sharing stories, appearing in the real world. Virtual influencers, they're so forgettable. And why are they forgettable? Well, it's because they're basically just a 3D render with a marketing team writing the description text of their Instagram post. It's like the facade of an influencer. It's the facade of something that's real. It's the final frontier of content. Or is it? Perhaps there is an even finaler frontier to reach. And that's what I want to accomplish. What if we could create a true virtual influencer that isn't being curated by a human? Imagine TikTok, but worse and but kind of funnier. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? 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 It's to kind of show how easy it is to make most of the stuff you see out there. Basically, we're just trying to add to the pile. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my goal. Take the human touch away from this as far as possible. We have AI tools under our belts. We're getting into Unreal. We got some real-time stuff. We got character animation tools. So much stuff in our belts right now. I'm gonna let the computer make the content for me. I'm not gonna make the content. You know, at the end of this, we have to actually have a little piece of software with a button that says content. Oh my god. We hopped on a call with my buddy Brad. He's really good at Unreal. He knows blueprints and some scripting stuff, but he knows it on a professional level that we don't. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who knows what will happen. But the idea is to try and create this procedural system that can effectively take a text-based script and then parse that out into the different elements we need for a, you know, five to 10 second long social media snippet. Are you talking about like the AI dungeon, like that form of storytelling, like how that just goes like nuts as it goes on? Yes, and most AIs end up doing that. And so AI dungeon, those guys are awesome. It's hilarious. So what we're working with is the same like algorithm that they're using. This is what I tell the AI to do. I say, hey, there's a character named ZZ who loves to post daily stories on his social media account. Below, I want you to list a bunch of suggested elements in his script, such as a suggested location, a suggested mood, some suggested dialogue, camera angle, like is it a selfie, whatever, and then also uh, suggest if he's dancing or not in this. Parameterizing it for like Unreal helps a lot. Exactly. Uh, and so we chatted with him about like the overarching like architecture of how we're gonna put this system together and he had a lot of wisdom on that. And Brad's gonna try and create a piece of Unreal Logic that will take our input text and parse the different parameters and send those off to the different parts of Unreal to you know load in the location, load in the animation, and now he's gonna run off and start prototyping some stuff that uh, we'll get to see next week, so I'm excited. I'm in. Catch you later. Peace. All right, Whew. it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff, man, whew. Okay, well, so I just spoke with Brad. Basically, we just walked through like the foundation systems that are being built out. It's easy to say, hey, let's make an AI influencer, all right? It's easy to say that. But what we're doing right now is we are breaking that down into its individual components. Where is this being filmed? What room is it in? Where are we? So we need to know that. We have to be able to dynamically shift that depending on our AI script. We need to know where the camera's gonna be. Is this a selfie? Is this gonna be a first person angle? Is, is this gonna be set on the ground or a table nearby? We have to be able to go through all these little things here and have this script dynamically generate everything. Obviously we are limited by the amount of assets we're throwing at it. Like the AI could obviously generate any type of location in the world, but for us to able to actually show it, you know, it has to be built. 
So the best proof of concept here is to have this set within a virtual influencer house. Those yeah. big mansions that they like coax teens from around the world to come and live at and then make social media posts. From like a programming standpoint, actually makes things uh, a lot more achievable right now. Where it's like, here's one big map and uh, we're gonna set you know zones and bounds for each like room and location, but basically keeps it all within this one massive level. Brad is handling some of that top level stuff right now, camera animation, character animation. And what I'm focused on right now is basically everything from the neck up. And one of the biggest hurdles is getting the character to automatically lip sync to an audio file, because that's what we're gonna need to do. We have to be able to throw audio at this character and then he's gonna have to say it. So our favorite boys at Meta, they got this thing called Oculus. You may have heard of it. They have a plugin where it listens to audio and it tries to get the visemes. What, what are visemes? I've talked about it before. It's a list of the shapes of your lips when you speak. It's like the difference between think and duck or put. Your lips make individual shapes for those and it can listen to audio and predict the lip shape that you're making. And it does this in real time. So all I do is plug in an audio file and it does the rest. Take a look. I was just out in the front yard and I saw a really cool looking bird. I'm not sure what kind of bird it was, but it was so pretty. I'm going to go look it up on my phone and see if I can find out more about it. So not perfect, but pretty good. Everything's together, it's moving. I need to go through and take one pass to make things more nuanced and then see how it really is from there. But what's nice about this system is I can drop any audio file I want in there right now and it just will do it. That's a huge deal, both for this project and anything else we're doing. So we have what the character's going to say and the mouth movements associated with that, but now we need a voice to bring our influencer to life. And it can't just be any voice. It has to be a voice appropriate for Ziera Vega. Our non-binary, eccentric, vapid social media influencer who posts long winding stories of their everyday adventures. Or at least that's what this GPT-3 algorithm is told to do. So in order to create Ziera's AI voice, we will be using Descript. Yes, I did get banned from using their service. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, I made a new account. No big deal. My female voice impression is not very good. So I just said, hey, Jordan, you know, you're a social media influencer already. So why not go deep into that stereotype yourself? Make it funny. I'm, I'm not an influencer all the time. I'm not always influencing peeps. So to sit here and talk for 10 minutes in my influencer voice, and now I have to be happy, silly, sad, horrified. It's gonna be interesting. It makes me sweaty. It's a lot to think about. I was out in the yard today playing with my dog and I saw a really funny sight. I saw a squirrel up in the tree. I think we're headed for some real dark times and we need to be prepared for it. I know a lot of people think I'm crazy. I'll do better next time. I just need some help. Can you help me? Perfect. <laughs> oh, it's weird. You think that's good? Yeah, we're, it's perfect, it's perfect. That's the final, final time. I mean, that's all just AI gibberish, too. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm not responsible for anything she just said. <laughs> well, most of our individual systems are working. The lip sync's working, character animation's working, dancing, camera angles, locations, we have a map. There's even an animated time of day as well, where it can choose what time this social media post is being filmed. So, everything's there in pieces, but right now the next task is to put it all together. You know, we've taken the cables, yep. we're, going, we're putting our head underneath the desk, getting everything <laughs> plugged in, and I think we could have a V1 running in the next day or two if things go well. The fact that like computers can write full-on novels now is pretty nuts. What's also kind of nuts is how language, written language specifically, kind of developed to support the recipes for beer like 5,000 years ago. And I learned that thanks to today's sponsor, Audible. A History of the World in Six Glasses is actually a pretty fascinating historical take at how technology and civilization has developed thanks to six different drinks. 
I can count, I promise. The book covers how civilization goes through time, transforming and evolving as these drinks have also changed. It went up to the Greeks who had wine, and then the spirits, you know, hard A stuff? That helped all the sailors get across the ocean and have a good time. Where's my rum gum? And then it culminated with coffee, tea, and then Coca-Cola. It's pretty nuts how these drinks have actually changed the course of human history. And this book tells you all about it. So what is Audible? You've heard me talk about it before, so chances are you already know, but essentially it's an all-in-one location for your favorite audiobooks, and they've got thousands of titles to choose from. As an Audible member, you get one free title per month, and that always accounts for books that usually cost more than your subscription. Just saying, it's a great way to save money if you want to listen to some audiobooks. And of course, there are Audible Originals. They come with your subscription, and you just get them whenever you want. And if you're into podcasts, well, guess what? You can listen to all your podcasts in the Audible app as well. Keep it all contained. You can download your titles for offline listening, or if you don't have that much space on your phone, you can just stream them all. It's very convenient. The Audible app makes it incredibly convenient to listen to these titles whenever you want. For instance, I love listening to books when I'm, you know, doing the dishes or walking my dogs. So of course, if you want to listen to this title, you can get a free 30-day trial by going to audible.com slash corridor crew or just simply texting corridor crew to 500-500. Again, that is audible.com slash corridor crew or you can text it 500-500. Just say corridor crew in the text and you'll be good. Welcome to Sam's Crazy Corner. Each time you see a shot or an angle like this, you know it's about to get very weird. We got a V1. We've finally taken all these puzzle pieces, all these, all these systems, and we have them connected and it is technically working. Let me warn you ahead of time. What you're about to see is strange. It is shocking, it is scary, it is janky, but it's completely procedural and generated by an AI. I just slipped in the bathtub and bumped my booty. Have you ever bumped your butt before? It really hurts. Maybe I should get a Band-Aid. My favorite type of Band-Aids have cool colors and patterns on them. I always stock up on them when I can. You have to make sure to dry the skin before applying them, or else they fall off. <laughs> <laughs> I've been down in the basement for hours, looking through all of my old stuff. I found this really old journal from when I was a kid. And it was so interesting to read. It was like reliving my past life. Sometimes I get so lost in thought that I forget what's going on around me. It's like my mind is its own world. <laughs> okay, so as you see, it's super janky, but the pieces are there. There's all sorts of stuff that's like going wrong right now. Like sometimes the character will like spawn in, in the camera's position. It'll start glitching out. And also, you know, the character isn't like looking at the camera, which we need to, we need to add a whole system to make sure, you know, hey, let's actually look at the lens. Um, there's lots of little things like this, but what you're watching here is a procedural animation. We basically go, hey, what's the location? We have a boundary. We have a box that bounds that location and spawns the character within it. It looks at the mood. It changes the facial expression of the character. The dialogue itself has a whole system where we're using loudness detection to motivate cuts. The big goal right now is to kind of iron out some of these bugs here so it starts feeling a little bit more smoother. Right now it's quite chaotic, but you know, once again, this is a system that's designed to handle any input we give it. We can plug this script in and anything can happen anywhere here and it will always be different each time you watch it. I'm noticing patterns beginning to form. This AI is very negative. Let's just say that. It likes to be angry and it likes to be disappointed. It likes to complain. I've noticed for some reason, it's so hard to get fun, happy posts out of it. Disappointed, I can't believe my date stood me up. I'm like, oh my gosh, basement, scared. I'm feeling scared right now. I'm in the basement by myself and I heard a noise. I'm gonna go check it out, wish me luck. I've been thinking a lot about life lately. What's the point of it all? Why are we here? I just don't know. I'm gonna keep thinking about this until I find an answer. It just, it just starts bringing me down because the thing is like, I know this is like garbled AI, but the moment you put them into a string, there's this psychological thing that starts happening where I'm like, I, like you just can't help but connect these thoughts. And the more it starts pumping out these negative ones, you're like, oh, you start feeling bad for this non-existent AI character. Life is confusing. I don't, I feel like I'm drifting through life without any purpose, like <laughs> bedroom sad. I'm so sad I want to lay in bed and cry all day. I don't want to face the world. Don't you think it would make sense for her to be scared that you've trapped her in this house? So what I've done is I have trapped this AI influencer in this house. You know, if I did that to a person, that would be bad. If I did it to a computer, well, they shouldn't be able to complain, correct? 
That's the idea. I was just thinking about how I really wanted to go out tonight, but then I remembered that I'm stuck at home. I'm really just disappointed that I can't go out and have fun. Next post, mood angry. I was just thinking about how I really hate this place. I hate the way it smells. I hate the way it looks. I just feel so angry all the time. Yeah, I'm serious. It's very intense having to read these. I, I feel like I'm kind of going crazy a little bit because everything, I know it shouldn't make sense and that these posts are completely disjointed, but I can't help but like feel like these are being written by an actual like being. I mean, these AIs work in the same way that our brains do. You know, they have neurons just like our brains have neurons. So kind of, if you think about it, it is a person. All right, so we showed you the V1. This is where the V2 is at. It's a lot smoother. I'm so excited to show you my new garden. I've been working on it for weeks and it's finally starting to come together. I've got all sorts of different flowers, vegetables, and herbs growing. It's so satisfying to see everything come to life. Do you like gardening? What are some of your favorite plants? <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. I'm lying in bed, thinking about life. It's so strange to think about <laughs> that how everything is temporary. an insect creature? It's kind of depressing when you think about it too much, but it's also strangely comforting. Knowing that everything is temporary means that nothing really matters in the grand scheme of things. We're all just temporary beings in a temporary <laughs> world. Like quirky. A table? Like, what is this? <laughs> wow, dude. It's like she's bell- <laughs> I, dude, I feel so influenced. Okay, this is looking great. There's one little camera bug. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Like, I'm okay on some glitchiness between shots because like, literally, we, each time the, the camera is supposed to cut, like, everything moves to a new spot. It's pretty smooth, it's watchable, you can understand it, you can see the characters speak, the dancing's great. Today's the big day. We've been diligently working to get most of these bugs fixed. I think they're fixed. But the point is, like, it is time to start releasing this into the world. I'm going to run it. And if this is, if this truly works, I'll be able to hit play and not have to worry about anything. Hi everyone, welcome to my home. My name is Sierra and I just wanted to say thanks for watching my videos. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my crazy adventures. There's something wrong with the audio right now. Uh, it's a little weird how the character's on the table, but whatever. Welcome to my game room. Whenever I want to play video games, this is where I come. I also have a pool table and a dartboard, but I don't use them as much. Okay, I think I've screwed up one thing. I wonder if I could fit a trampoline in here. <laughs> I thought it was work. Okay, I'm hitting cut. Uh, I'm I'm a little confused right now. What's going on here? Uh, it's just when you think everything everything is supposed to work, uh, suddenly it doesn't. So, um, that's cool. Uh, I think this is Peter's fault. I'm gonna blame him. Two hours later. Last we spoke, it was ready to go. Well, yeah. Except I hadn't really looked at it all weekend, and I thought it was working on Friday. And then there was like a tweak or two made, and I don't even know if it, was, if, if it was those tweaks or if it had been broken all along and I just never noticed it. When you're doing this kind of stuff, like sometimes you make a change to one little system and then it ripples throughout the logic of how everything else works. And like one small change can kind of break it all. And you're like, okay, well sometimes you need that small change in order to make it even work in the first place. And so now it's in a state where it's the most broken it's been so far. Um, it was so, 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 so close. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I... She's fighting back. This is me. not a, The AI is, a, is dumb. This is not a real <laughs> creature or being. And if their soul is resisting this, well... Are you mad at her for this? I'm not, not no, Dean, I'm not, I'm not... <laughs> this is the head on the desk moment that everyone likes to get, so... Here we go. Here I'm we just go. gonna do it. Here we go. Gonna, uh... Oh... You're so close, Sam. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if we can get this fixed and working. I know what the path is to get it working. It seems like a simple path. I had to rebuild a bunch of stuff. We basically, we had to go in and just destroy that. We had to tear it apart, break it down. Thankfully, it was pretty straightforward. Like, we, we know how this stuff works pretty well at this point to, uh, to make big changes quickly. 
Yeah, there's an occasional hiccup or two, the like that. Found this really strange looking door. It's all rusty and there's a weird... Uh, anyway, so yeah, it's, it's generally working. Uh, we have an occasional glitch or two here. Oh well. But the thing is, I really want to get this out into the world. And it's not truly ready until we have one last thing. At the very beginning, we were talking about making a content button. We wanted to hit a button and have it make content. However, yeah. the way it was built, you know, that's not quite the case right now. Right now, we're generating the script from the GPT-3, but then we then have to create a spreadsheet out of that script so that Unreal can handle and parse everything. We also need to isolate the dialogue from the script and generate a track plugin. So it's, well, it's not that much work. In fact, it's only like 10, 15 minutes of work. So, so it's not a content button right now, but it's certainly like, a, like an accelerated, like we, we get to skip the line when it comes to making content. It's, a, it's a content fast pass. Peter, like I brought you here today because I knew that you would be the perfect fit for helping us fix this last step in the process. So you, you are the, literally the one person who would allow me to press a button and content would just suddenly appear on the internet. Whatever you need to make your vision come true, I'm game. Yeah. Is that, oh. is that, should I? Yeah, no, that, means, to... that means you should start the, the you want all me to the start stuff. making TikToks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I got it. Oh, okay. You heard that? Okay. Yeah. Just, just I was just I, making sure it still just, works. Give me a couple minutes. Okay. I've been thinking a lot about AI lately, and I'm really curious about it. I know a lot of people are afraid of AI, but I think it has the potential to do a lot of good. I'm not saying we should all become robots, but I think AI can help us in ways we never thought possible. What do you think? Everything that Zierra posts about and comments about is all stuff that either you're suggesting or it's coming up with. Like these, these are storylines that it continues to build upon based off of all the engagements it has. If you want to check it out yourself, Head over to Zierra, X-I-E-R-R-A -R -R -A, underscore Vega on Instagram or TikTok and leave a comment, send a DM. Uh, it's interactive as well. Feel free to ask a question, uh, leave a suggestion of where Zierra should visit. You know, it's, it's very open-ended, have at it. Also, I hate to, you know, do two pushes like this, uh, but if you could subscribe to this channel as well, that'd be pretty cool too.